Hill in the game at running back and wide receiver. And a safety, we think. A safety by Jaleel Johnson. Jaleel Johnson, it is a safety. Jaleel Johnson, another in a long line of terrific defensive tackles that have played here at Iowa. What's up, guys? My name is Robert Donaldson, and I'm with BlackheartGoldPants.com. Uh, today, we're going to be bringing you the first NFL Draft Scouting Report video of this offseason. And the player we're going to be focusing in on is actually one of my favorite defensive linemen in this class. And it's a face that a lot of you guys already know. Um, it's Iowa defensive tackle Jaleel Johnson. Um, so let's cut this intro short, and let's just hop right into it. Coming in at 6'3", 310 pounds, um, Johnson is a, a pretty big guy. And if I were to summarize him as a player in just a short little blurb, um, I would say that he's an incredibly talented power rusher, and he possesses great explosion, and I would also say that he possesses great technical skills. Um, and that sort of brings me to the first thing that really stands out when you watch him play. Um, and that is sort of his violent yet technical hand usage. Um, one of the things that he does incredibly well, in my opinion, is get his hands inside the chest of the guy across from him with consistency and accuracy. And his initial punch is, is actually really quite powerful. And um, that allows him to set up a lot of his pass rushing moves, uh, like the rip move, swim move, bull rush. Um, and as an interior defensive lineman, um, a lot of your one-on-one -on -one battles um, are going to be won with you beating an offensive lineman in a hands battle. Um, the offensive lineman is trying to latch on uh, D lineman's shoulder pads, and a D lineman is trying to get inside of the O lineman's chest. Um, and because Johnson is so explosive and powerful when delivering his initial punch, um, when he's left in those one on one situations, uh, he's winning them more often than not. So now that we've touched on Johnson's power a little bit, um, the next aspect of his game that you can't really ignore is how well and how consistently he's able to achieve and then win with leverage um johnson's power alone at, you know as we saw in those past clips uh, is enough to put even the more talented centers and guards in the country on skates but when you throw in the fact that johnson is 6'3 and is still able to win the leverage battle on a pretty consistent basis um you know, that just opens up a variety of options as a pass rusher um, because now you're combining physical strength and technical strength. Um, you know, with some players who have Johnson's uh, level of strength or just like freaky athletes, um, you'll see them trying too hard to rely on their natural ability um, to compensate for like poor technique. Um, but with Johnson, you don't really see that. Uh, for example, something that Johnson does quite often um, is utilize what's called a long arm or a one arm technique, um, which is exactly as it sounds. Um, as a defensive lineman, um, like early on, you're taught that one arm is longer than two, um, meaning that engaging with one arm allows for more separation than engaging with two. Um, however, the thing is with this is that most players just aren't strong enough to execute this efficiently or with consistency with consistency um, and Johnson's not one of those players um, you know the raw power that he possesses allows him to keep driving his legs through contact and because of the separation he's able to create um, typically he's gonna put pressure on the quarterback Transitioning now to how Johnson fares against the run, um, this is sort of where you have a mixed bag with him. Um, on one hand, you have some pretty good things, and on the other, you have some not so good things. Uh, but let's start off with the good. Uh, first things first, as you guys might have expected, um, Johnson's strength is still just as prevalent um, against the run as it is against the pass. Um, you know, he's able to anchor himself down hold his ground, um, and two gap pretty well as well. Um, and being as strong as he is, uh, you know, he's able to constantly keep his head up and keep an eye on the ball at all times. Um, and that's arguably the most important part of quality defensive line play, in my opinion. 
Um, so for defensive linemen, uh, peripherals are incredibly important. Um, in other words, like a defensive lineman should never be visually focused on just one thing at a time. Um, you know, a great defensive lineman is not going to take his eyes off the ball and get lost in the mess, which is his, which is the middle of the defensive line. And Johnson is able to consistently keep his eyes on the ball and carry out his assignments. Lastly, I really like the way Johnson moves laterally against the run, or um, just how he moves in space uh, when the pocket's being moved. Um, you know, the ball's not going to come your way every single time, and you're going to be forced to adjust. And from by all accounts, from what I've seen, uh, he looks pretty comfortable in that area. So, as good and as well-rounded as I think Johnson is, he isn't perfect. Um, you know, there are definitely areas of his game where you'd like to see some improvement. And the first one that really comes to mind with him is his ability to take on double teams. So, as you'll see in these next few clips, Johnson's worst game came against Penn State this past season. And the reason I say that is because there were multiple times in that game where Johnson was just getting washed out of a play because of a double team. And taking on double teams is actually an issue that shows up far too often when you watch his tape. Now, me saying that may seem a little bit contradictory given how much I've been raving about his strength. Uh, however, Johnson's issue with double teams, at least in my opinion, has more to do with a flaw in technique rather than strength. Um, because I do think he's strong enough to take on double teams with consistency and effectiveness. Um, so with these clips, I really want you to keep an eye on that initial engagement and really pay attention to his feet. Because there are times while watching Johnson that I notice that he's not stepping into his engagements. Um, instead, he's lunging or catching an offensive lineman. And when you do that, you're sacrificing your base and no matter how strong of a player you are when you're not engaging that lower half you're putting yourself at a disadvantage um, especially when you're asked to take on two players at once another thing i really noticed with johnson's game and this affects him against the run and the pass um, is that he has a pretty average get off or first step um, relative to other nfl players um, and although I would consider him to be an explosive athlete, like I think his jumps at the combine are going to really impress. He's not a twitchy athlete like Aaron Donald coming out of Pittsburgh or Sheldon Rankins coming out of Louisville. And those are two guys that went early in the, in the draft in recent years. Um, and for example, right here, Johnson is one of the last defensive linemen to really pop out of his stance. And... On this play, it leads him to getting backdoored by the right tackle um, after engaging on the reach block. And this is something you kind of see occur often on tape, where it's not technique or power that kills him in a matchup, but just that initial upper hand advantage um, off the line of scrimmage from the jump that really sets him back. And that's not something you can really fix. That's just, you know, the athlete that he is. Now, to wrap things up, uh, Johnson is an incredibly talented player, and I think like mu much like Mike Daniels, we'll look back on his tenure as a Hawkeye uh, with very favorable light. Um, also, uh, one last thing I'd like to comment on is a common criticism I've seen from a lot of other NFL draft guys out there, and that is concerns about his motor. Um, so here's my issue with questioning a guy's motor and i'm not just talking about johnson here uh i don't ever like questioning a guy's motor unless i know for certain that he's not putting in the maximum amount of effort you know whether teammates are coming out and say that, saying that or coaches are coming out and saying that or i literally see him putting in little to no effort on multiple plays um you know with johnson 
you're, you're talking about a player who comes in at 6'3", 310 pounds, and is lining up on the field for nearly every single defensive snap. Um, and they, to expect a guy with that kind of size, who plays as many snaps as he does, to maintain that like same level of intensity every single snap throughout the entire duration of a game, it, that's literally impossible. So at some point, you're going to have to take a playoff here and there, or at least make an effort to reserve some of that energy. Um, and that's just a little bit of a rant from me. Now, moving on from that, um, although Johnson spent a lot of time playing both the one technique and the three technique spot at Iowa, um, in the NFL, I do think his best or most optimal position will be playing out of that three technique spot where he won't have to see nearly as many double teams and he'll really have the opportunity to pin his ears back and get after the passer playing and play out. Um, and I really think that's his forte. Uh, so with that said, my pro comparison for him, and it's one that I've seen thrown out quite a bit, um, is Carolina defensive lineman Quan Short. And I'm actually a pretty big fan of this comparison for a few reasons. Sometimes you don't really get a good comparison for a guy, but I'm a big fan of this one. Um, you know, they're, they're both players that have similar builds, and they're also players that are similar athletes. Um, and in addition, they win in similar ways. They get after the passer with power. Um, and another aspect to consider, uh, they're both productive Big Ten defensive players, too. Um, and now, as far as grade is concerned, because I don't have any combine information to factor in, and that is part of my grading process, all I can give you guys at the moment is a film grade, and on film, I have Johnson down as a first rounder, um, and a top 20 player at that too. Um, in terms of draft projection, it's really hard to say without any combine information whatsoever, but I do think that he'll be in play for somebody in the later half of the first round or early on day two. So guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more of these scouting report type videos in the future, um, definitely recommend the post, share it on social media, and definitely, and I'm going to put an emphasis on this, leave a comment because I love being able to interact with you guys um, and it's really why I love putting out content so much. Um, also, if, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so. I am at RobDFB on there. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys at the moment. So I will see you all next time.